of the decision support system for material management. So here, as we talk about resources, we have conducted our research on two different uh, important resources, that is material and the labor. So first, we will be discussing on the decision support system for material management. Particularly, we will be discussing the critical issues. Which is the point of this one? So uh, to develop this decision support system, first we have identified what are the critical issues in material management. So what is the system that the industry is following towards material management and what are the difficult, you know, different issues they are facing. Then we have also uh, checked what are the different solutions have been provided in different literature. And then we have uh, developed some strategies uh, to develop, you know, to prepare a material procurement schedule and which is integrated in the decision support system. So in that, while pre uh, preparing the material procurement schedule, that is the optimized material procurement schedule that will help in material delivery and uh, the you know uh, procurement, that is the major issues are found in the industry. And for that, we have first identified, I mean, we have analyzed the lead time, assessed the lead time, and identified what are the critical factors that actually influence the lead time. Further, we have also assessed the criticality of materials. So now, uh, as you know, that limit is budget in the construction project. So in a budget constraint situation, uh, it is required to uh, it is required to prioritize the procurement of materials, and for that, it is required to assess the criticality of materials. And so we assess the criticality of materials depending on different factors that we will be discussing. And further, we have developed the optimized material procurement schedule. Okay, so the different inputs or uh, the optimization algorithm will be discussed in that. And further, it is integrated to a DSS, decision support system for the material management. So ultimately, the DSS will produce based on the construction schedule and optimum material procurement schedule that will help the construction practitioners to know when the materials are to be. Uh, uh, to be purchased, how much quantity would be purchased while minimizing the cost and considering other important parameters, okay, to make it uh, more realistic. The next, the next research that we have conducted on the labor management. So there we have developed a uh, decent support system for the labor management. We have initially, uh, you know, we, we, I will be discussing the existing labor management system in that uh, you know, uh, particularly the leveling and allocation will be discussed. Further, a new algorithm has been has been developed for the labor management to get the optimized labor acquisition schedule. And further, uh, we have also developed the decision support system for labor management. So these two important issues and the you know the development of the decision support system for their acquisition will be discussed in this presentation. Followed by. Since uh, there are many researchers here, uh, so I would also like to discuss some important statistical techniques that are used in the research, particularly in the field of construction management. Of course, they are also used in other fields. So, uh, you know, their applicability, their li you know, limitation, what type of data required for such an analysis, okay. Uh, so that will be discussed. So these are the contents uh, for this presentation. As we, uh, as I have mentioned, there are two types of resources, particularly physical resources and human resources. Physical resources that include the materials, plant and equipment, whereas the human resources include the labor, project team members, project managers and consultants. They are, these are, uh, you know, two most important resources, material and labor. As uh, you can see here, typically in a construction project, materials and equipment account for 50 to 60 percent of the total project cost. And this labor account for 25% of the total project cost. So minimizing, I mean, to minimize the cost of the construction project, it is essential to reduce the cost of acquisition for material and equipment and also acquisition for labors. Okay, so, and as you know that industry is growing very fast, particularly the Indian construction industry, it is expected to be the third largest market by 2025 and it is the second largest employer in India. So. Uh, materials management and labor management is two crucial aspects and that's why we have conducted research for their optimized acquisition in the construction industry. Now effective resource management can help in better scheduling if the materials and labors are available on time, the execution can be completed on time. 
their unavailability can delay the uh, activity so it can uh, delay the project it is uh, uh, you know they can also uh, reduce the cost if it is uh, uh, they are they are engaged on time uh, considering the uh, cost of acquisition and also if they are available they can improve the productivity so the resource management is one of the most important tasks for successful completion of construction project and if the resources are not effectively managed so ineffective resource management may also lead to the risk to the project that may increase the cost of the project will increase uh, you know will you know delay the project so there are several uh, issues will occur if the resources are not managed properly in the project okay so first we will discuss about the labor management followed by the uh, first we will discuss the material management followed by the labor management so uh, to see what is the material management process that is followed by the industry particularly the large construction organization so that has been investigated and we found that the material the project team <coughs> project team now based on their requirement they initially raise the material requisition okay so there will be one mr registers usually the construction managers uh, or the planning manager they will write what material is required how much quantity of that material is required so usually in a large project or in large organization if mr register is maintained okay <coughs> based on that mr register then uh, emr electronic material requisition is generated in their system so that is one you know mr is mr register is that handbook there you know the construction manager manager is writing their requirement then that will be raised you know that will be converted to emr okay so emr will be generated once emr is generated then this is system generated emr so that will be known to the procurement team as well as planning team as the project manager once the emr is generated then that will be authorized by the competent authority maybe the project manager or the planning manager okay now there are two systems are followed in the industry one is the central procurement another is the project procurement in case of central procurement so for multiple projects requirement is collected by the central procurement team that uh, they are sitting in the headquarter or maybe in the regional office so particularly for the you know uh, for some mass uh, i mean uh, for some material like steel and uh, steel rebar and cement uh, i mean mass huge quantity of those materials are required in different projects so for from different projects these requirement are collected from the hq team or the regional team okay so now they will uh, they will contact with the suppliers so first they will float the enquiry to the suppliers in case of central procurement they will receive the quotations from supplier and further that will be evaluated the, those quotations will be evaluated that are received from the suppliers and further followed by the negotiation and selection of the suppliers that supplier will be selected for delivery of that particular material and those materials again would be uh, delivered to different projects okay so this is one step but some other materials that are not required in that huge quantity so for that project procurement team they go for the procurement okay so, uh, so for that they will float the inquiries to the suppliers so if the material is not required to be purchased through the central procurement team then project procurement team will float inquiries to the suppliers okay in every project there will be a project procurement team store department so that is their role they will float the inquiries to the supplier they will receive the quotations from supplier finally they will evaluate the quotation and from the negotiation they will select the suppliers okay so this you can see here after authorization of emr first it will be checked whether the supplier for that material is already decided by the central procurement team if it is not then the project procurement team will go for the negotiation with the supplier based on the quotation received and they will select a supplier so either through this central procurement team or through this project project procurement team suppliers will be selected and further the purchase order would be generated for that material okay and then purchase order would be authorized by the competent authority and po would be uh, you know sent to the suppliers the supplier again uh, will try, you know deliver the material so follow up and transportation of materials will take place materials will be received once the material is received to the site okay usually the goods inward note gin is generated that indicates that you have received that much material so it becomes your inventory now okay so once the gin has been uh, you know generated then the inspection and testing of materials are 
uh, taken place. Okay. So materials will be inspected. Some of the materials, if found damaged, they will be rejected. Okay. And would be asked uh, to the suppliers to replace that material. Okay. After inspection, after this inspection, then uh, wrong materials will be rejected and damaged damage materials also would be rejected. And finally, the uh, you know the right materials, that quality materials, that will be stored. And so material receipt note, material receipt note would be generated. So MRN is after the inspection that indicates that now you have to pay the suppliers because you have accepted the quality of the materials. Now this is, uh, you know, this is the part of your inventory, project's inventory and need to be paid to the supplier based on that quantity. Okay. So once MRN has been generated, then, you know, based on that MRN quantity, the payment is made to the suppliers. Okay. So, MRN, uh, uh, you know, that will now come to the inventory of the material. So, store, you know, based on the site requirement, they will issue the material to the project site. So, uh, you will see in the project there will be particular indent form. So, in that indent form, they will write what is the material that requiring, which area they need. So, you know, which construction manager is signing there. Also, the material code would be there and some recon code is there. Because these materials, when it is issued through that recon code that is tracked and that is accounted for the cost calculation. Okay, so uh, through this indent, that material should be issued to the site. Okay, now that is the you know site people's responsibility to uh, use that material that has been issued from the store. Okay, now that material would be used in the site and further the non-consumable materials or unused material would be returned to the store if that is not being used so in this way the material management process is uh, you know uh, taken there it is carried out there in the industry okay but here what you can see the this process starts with the material requisition mr or in the central procurement team they will go for the you know selection of the suppliers but you can see in the existing system the material planning module is not incorporated and that is why in many times you will see the project people will say this material is very much urgent i need it tomorrow okay because that since the material planning module is not integrated they do not know when the material is actually required so there are different departments working in the project okay one is planning department another is procurement department people are working in the execution so execution team is there now this planning team is having that schedule construction schedule they know when that activities would be carried out how much active you know how much materials are required what materials are required so they can plan in that way but they do not have information on the suppliers and the lead, lead time i mean how much uh, days or how much time is required to uh, i mean after placing the order to deliver the material to the site okay also they do, do not know which uh, suppliers are available okay but these suppliers information and the lead time so supply related information are with the procurement team so now these teams work independently and there is a lot of miscommunication between them. There is no integrated system that the supply, you know, the procurement team can, can also understand that uh, when the materials is actually required so that they can start the process. Also, this project uh, planning team, they do not have the supply related information. So that's why there is a requirement of an integrated system that using that integrated system all the different departments can understand when that particular material is required how much quantity is required so it is required to develop a material planning module that can be integrated with the existing system so that several material planning and delivery related issues could be you know addressed okay so this is the lack we have uh, identified first because to develop or to improve any system first you have to see what is the existing system what is the drawback there and accordingly we have to act okay so this, uh, you know, we have identified. So what we, have, we are discussing that the existing computer-based system does not incorporate the material planning. Okay. If you see any of the companies like LNT, SPCL, they are using like ERP, SAP model. So you can see that that model, uh, you know, this, this uh, ERP, SAP, that does not incorporate the material planning module. Okay. Also, we have identified several issues. Okay, so some of the issues are uh, included here, like over or under ordering of materials. You do not need that much materials, but materials are being procured. Okay, and it is stored there. Some of the materials, if you store for a long day, it will be damaged. Again, it will increase your inventory cost. Okay, you have you need a larger area to keep those materials in the site. In some cases, you know, lesser materials are procured. 
you need more materials so in between you have to stop the activity okay so that is one issue then delay in payment to the suppliers you have purchased so many materials and you do not have budget so you are not capable of paying the money to the suppliers that is another issue so next time the suppliers i mean they will hesitate to deliver you because they are not getting money properly that is another challenge late delivery is another challenge because you are asking the uh, you know procurement team that i need the material urgently and you have not considered the lead time okay so if the material is locally available can be procured urgently or within few days but if the material is not available locally you have to uh, bring it from some other places so lead time should be considered and since the lead time is not being incorporated in the system so late delivery has been found in many places storage of required materials you have procured so many materials and you, you do not have storage you know enough storage capacity so you are keeping the materials outside of the storage area and that will damage the material insufficient storage facilities are, are there and non integration of construction schedule with material planning that is another issue so construction schedule is not incorporated with the material management system that i have shown there so ideally that construction schedule should be integrated with the material planning system so that one can understand based on the different activities when a particular material is required and how much quantity of that material is required so that is the drawback in that system so that's why we work on uh, uh, this system to improve or to address the different issues okay so i have just mentioned few of the issues in that actually we have identified multiple issues so to what happened Oh, sorry. So actually, we identified 33 material management issues from the literature and discussion with the experts. Okay, some of the issues I have uh, written there, but total 33 issues are identified. Now, to understand which of these issues are critical, because you cannot, uh, you know, go for the solution for every issues. They are large in numbers. So basically, in the research, what is done is when you have a large number of variables. Okay. so these variables are actually uh, reduced to some numbers that can be manageable so one technique is there which is called factor analysis have you heard of this factor analysis technique so factor analysis is one such technique which can group the variables okay so uh, the variables that are grouped in one particular factor they have some correlation okay so based on these 33 issues we have carried out the factor analysis so of course we have collected data from the through the questionnaire survey uh, about uh, you know uh, you know 100 from 100, about 80 to 100 respondents and then we you know analyzing that data using the factor analysis we have extracted factors from those issues okay so these are the different factors one is that inadequate planning of materials lack of information and communication improper delivery of materials difficulty in transportation of materials change in scope financial issues in procurement so these are the different factors we have extracted from those 33 issues that we identified initially okay so what was the data for this survey data okay that is collected from the uh, professionals who are involved in the material management process are having a good amount of experience okay so analyzing those those data conducting the exploratory factor analysis there are two types one is exploratory factor analysis another is confirmatory factor analysis so we have conducted exploratory factor analysis to extract the factors from those variables okay now taking those factors the next step was to identify which of these factors are most critical okay so to understand that we have developed two hypotheses here okay the first hypothesis was that material management issues have a significant positive influence on the disruption of the project cost performance this hypothesis has been built another hypothesis that material management issues have a significant positive influence on the disruption of the project schedule performance so schedule and cost performance these are the two important parameters if we talk about the project performance so that's why we have examined the effect of those factors on the cost performance and the schedule performance okay and we have developed this hypothesis okay now how we can test the hypothesis you can see here we have multiple variables correct 33 issues that i am calling as variables also we have factors okay so you can see we have one level that is having that variables 33 variables another level we have these factors 
that these variables are grouped into that factors and then again we are talking about some performance parameters and then these performance parameters are uh, you know they i mean here we have considered two performance parameters so what type of technique can be used any idea so through that you cannot have that multiple level of construct okay anova or regress if we, if i talk about regress analysis that is usually adopted to check the relationship between dependent variable and independent variables but in this case since you have the multiple dependent variables the regress analysis will not work okay you have multiple so in regress analysis what we consider if it is a simple uh, uh, regress analysis we have one dependent variables we have one independent variables if it is multiple regress analysis we have one dependent variable we have multiple independent variables but since in this case we have two dependent variables so could not have deployed this uh, regress analysis okay and again there are multiple level of constructs so again anova will not be applicable so in if you you know if you again address this you know find this type of uh, you know uh, issues or this type of research problem even in your case you go for the structural equation modeling that is called structural equation modeling again in the structural equation modeling there are two types one is the variance based structural equation modeling another is the covariance based structural equation modeling okay so variance based structural equation modeling is also called as pls acm partial least square structural equation modeling and another is the covariance based structural equation modeling now it depends uh, you know what type of data you have okay so covariance based structural equation modeling is usually adopted when you have the data which is normally distributed okay and if your data is not normally distributed in that case pls acm is found to be more suitable so in our case we have checked the normality of the data and it is found that the data distribution is normal and so we have deployed the covariance based structural equation modeling now how the hypothesized model for that structural equation model looks like see this is a very complicated model is not it so here you can see the number of uh, you know variables there these variables are grouped into different factors so these are the factors one factor is improper delivery material and in that factor you can see different variables are associated with that factor there is another factor that is inadequate planning of material again there are multiple variables are associated with that so we have one level here we have another level here we have another level here and this is the another level so there are multiple levels in that model and that's why we went for the structural equation modeling particularly the covariance based structural equation modeling now you can see if you cannot deploy the regress analysis because here this is the dependent variable for the independent variables okay now this is your dependent variable for these independent variables so this factor once it is acting as the dependent variable but while these are acting as the dependent variable these are working as you know